I think, uh, obviously, the topic that we have today, one of the questions that I'm asking, in fact, the question maybe we are asking all of ourselves is, in what way can transdisciplinary design make a difference? And how can we actually think about transdisciplinary design as a way to uh, enable us to evolve the way in which we actually connect to our practice, practice today and practice tomorrow, as well as, of course, uh, academic theory and so on. I'm an academic and I'm an architect as a background and the thing is that we should agree at least on the definition of what is transdisciplinary otherwise we should uh, refer to the theory of complexity um, Eisenberg, uh, Einstein, Levi-Strauss they were um, providing us a different way to look at things. Transdisciplinarity is uh, playing in a different in a different playground because it's not interested in the interaction among disciplines, but it's saying disciplines has have to step back, and so the problem is the way we set the boundaries of each discipline and how we are able to erase and blur those um, boundaries. So within the architectural industry, I want to talk to you about it through Deaf Eyes. So Deaf Architecture Front is a platform which um, I established to make sure that we can have open source resources and education across the Deaf community to make sure greater access for the Deaf community into architectural industries. So as part of establishing DAF, I actually conducted a survey with the deaf community and we asked a, a number of questions. So one of the questions was, you know, are you able or do you feel you are able to engage with architecture generally? And as you can see from the statistics, 64% said no. So obviously you can see here, so we've also, th we're thinking about how the deaf community can be heard and seen in an architecture space, but we're looking at deaf space as an initiative. These, this slide just encapsulates all of the services that Deaf Architecture Front will be providing. So no British Sign Language established signs for specific architectural jargon and terminology, which is an issue um, because obviously it just means that there's no way to actually explain any architectural terminology. What we want to do is make sure that the architecture industry is accessible but also visible um, to the deaf community and make sure it's, you know, it's not a place that they don't feel welcome. Thank you. I think that's everything in a nutshell. I run an online education platform called Climate in Colour that uses um, beautiful graphic design to try and educate and make learning about the climate and environmental crises more engaging, accessible and diverse. Um, but I also am a PhD researcher and I think that's really what I'm going to focus on today um, in terms of interdisciplinary design. I work in the intersection of um, ecology, sociology, and computer science, more specifically participatory design, so in the space of human-computer interaction. And my work focuses on how we build technologies for conserving the planet, um, specifically monitoring biodiversity, um, but in a just way. So as the climate crisis worsens and as the biodiversity crisis worsens and tech seems to become at the center of um, the solutions that are put forward. I work with bioacoustics, so these are acoustic sensors that record forest sound and ecologists use this sound as data to analyze um, species, populations, um, whether they're increasing, decreasing, where in the forest species are um, habiting. Um, so pretty much um, standard eco ecological questions, but being answered in a very technological way. We're currently still workshopping and building tools that community members can use to explore the soundscapes in the forest and to use this to inform their actions on the ground and so. But do you think we need transdisciplinary design to help us solve the problems that are actually emerging through what you're seeing? 
I think that a lot of the experiences I've had doing interdisciplinary design have actually been quite frustrating um, because I think that what you're doing is not breaking the barriers between disciplines as a whole. You're just breaking them down in your own work, um, which means that the institutions of all of those different disciplines are still very rigid. But I think the transdisciplinary moves further than just individual academics or practitioners sort of bringing together parts of different um, disciplines that they think are essential to be put together. But transdisciplinary sees just a much sharper blurring of all of those lines and allows us to actually do the work. I think that in interdisciplinary design, you still have to um, fight against a lot of the disciplinary boundaries a lot, which becomes a hindrance to the work. To me, transdisciplinarity is the complexity boost to education that, of course, has to, let's say, pay uh, attention to the super strict boundaries of disciplines that have to protect for very noble um, reasons, that is transferring knowledge, but on the other side are sometimes too much overprotected, and in fact, this is the academic debate. So to me, it's a matter of tr um, transforming the focus on application to the focus on implications. And, and it's applications is fine. I mean, we, if, if we don't have anyone that is applying skills in order to get this object working, I can't talk in, with this loud volume. But, but what, what they are showing and what I am trying in, in, and with my colleagues in, in school is trying to make students able to understand that it's not just a matter of application, but it's very important, often more important, the implications of what you do rather than applications on how you do it. Chris, have you had any thoughts in the last 48 seconds uh, about uh, Winbo's question about the distinction between transdisciplinary design and what that might mean as opposed to the wider, broader concept of transdisciplinarity or transdiscipline? I think for me, it's, I'm thinking more about how maybe we should establish a deaf space lab so that we do start looking at transdisciplinary design because I think, you know, members of the deaf community are not only deaf, they also, you know, they are an intersectional community. So we also need to look at perhaps if they need wheelchair access or other, you know, they have other additional needs and we need to address those. So I think maybe it's about creating the space to tackle those issues. Uh, design... To, to me, to us, to a group, to academic, to an academic group, it's um, the best way because it has all the languages, the tools, and the methodologies to try to forgive me to demolish disciplines and to overpass the boundaries. So I really agree, and I think that design has all of the tools to tackle uh, transdisciplinarity, and I think that there's at least in comparison to other ways of researching and understanding the world, design holds a lot of flexibility or at least like hunger for change or curiosity for change. And so whether it's within design specifically or whether it's applying design to wider questions, I think that it's quite a good breeding ground for these conversations. And as Chris said, it, design can be that lab to start asking these um, Difficult questions. Fantastic, Jocelyn.